Leafs Convert Hockey World. What is up? This is the Leafs Convo Podcast. My name is Norman James. Happy Columbus Day to our American listeners, all two of you. I'm going to find out what that actually means. Michael Piagello is going to enlighten me. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving to our Canadian listeners. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a podcast. How about that game in Chicago last night? What was it? 10-9? Fire wagon hockey. It's fun to watch for us, but not for the head coach. Mike's ready to pod. I am too. What do you say? Let's go. The Leafs combo starts right now. And here he is, the beautiful, the one and only, Michael Piagello. Hello, sir. I don't know how beautiful I am. <laughs> Jeez. Good morning, Norman. It's Monday in western New York. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful Col- thing. It, it's Columbus Day here, and happy Thanksgiving to all the listeners in Canada. Well, thank you very much. So what's Columbus Day all about? I don't know. Uh, I, should, day, I should know. It's a day. It's a day off from work. It's a national uh, holiday. Uh, uh, uh. So, 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 a day off from work for federal employees and for banks mm-hmm. uh, and the and the U.S. Postal Service, and uh, mm-hmm. acknowledging the uh, discovery of America by Christopher Columbus. Ah. Uh, although he he didn't even land on the mainland, it was in the West Indies. What do we call that game in Chicago, Michael? Uh, fire wagon, barn burner, um, tire, tire, pond, tire fire, tire fire. Uh, the Leafs getting it done, and you know, right now, game three. Uh, the, I just want to see them collect as many points as they possibly can. Ironically, it's like I know, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that I have uh, clairvoyant uh, tendencies, but I, 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 the way the the teams were scoring in the first period, I says the way this game is going, it's going to end up seven six, and uh, Mike Babcock should stock up on his Pepto Bismol. Well, it ended up seven six, and I'm sure he's uh, looking for coupons right now. Mike, you are a master, though. I mean, you're, I was just telling my wife yesterday the two people i have to kiss up to my wife and you um one to keep the podcast going and two to keep to keep the, the podcast, podcast going. going yeah exactly um <laughs> but no i was telling her last night like you're just uh you just you know your stuff you're the best in the business and i wouldn't be surprised if you did make that prognostication michael the things that we expected from this team or you know that we the extremes mm-hmm. have already come to light austin matthews is He's, he's just ridiculous. John Tavares, equally ridiculous. Um, Morgan Riley. I mean, there's a guy, who knows, he could be in the conversation for a Norris. All these guys that we expected greatness from have produced so far. And the things that we expected problems from, mm-hmm. they're giving us problems. They're giving the team problems. They're giving the head coach problem, Mr. Uh, Pepto-Bismol. Michael, why is it that the world shouts the Leafs will have defensive problems from the rooftops? And the Leafs hear that. And then they come out and show that you know, their deficiencies on defense are exactly what everybody thought they'd be. Why? Why can't they defy the odds? Well, for, first of all, it's like I, this morning when I, because I'm, I'm going to be writing my uh, column for Hockey Buzz uh, pretty soon, and the line that popped into my head was the old Dennis Green line. They, they are who we thought they were, and that, that can be applied to the Leafs. Offensively, they're brilliant. I mean, you know, seven goals and, you know, they, they were sleeping in the first half of the first period. And then Babcock switches Kappen into the, to the number one line with uh, Marlowe and Matthews and all of a sudden two goals and it's right back in and Tavares with the hat trick and Matthews with his brilliant four point performance. But defensively they're a train wreck and, 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 and that's over maybe overstating it slightly, but not, not really. I, I, you know, there's uh, you know, a team that has a has a one goal lead in the third period, you know, you're going to give up that empty that uh, that uh, six on five goal every once in a while. They did it twice in the last minute and a half of the third period. That's inexcusable, and you know, part of that has to be blamed on the defense. Part of it has to be blamed on Garrett Sparks, who I did not think was strong in his first game. But all the all the th- concerns going into the season. Offensively, no concern. Even without William, William Nylander, did you even miss William Nylander yesterday? No, they scored seven goals. Um, but defensively, Gardner made a couple bad giveaways. They put Martin Marinson in there. He, I don't think he was particularly strong. Um, they're just playing this wide open fire wagon hockey. And if you remember, Norm, at the beginning of last year, their season opener against the Rangers, it was I think it was eight five. They had like a five one or five two lead. The yeah. Rangers came back and then they ended up winning at eight five. That was the sort of wide open hockey that you get at the beginning of the season. But you you really and they'll tighten up and everybody will tighten up. But this team needs to play more responsible defensively throughout the year to win the division and to get far in the playoffs. 
And right now they're not doing it. The Leafs in a fire wagon show of excellence will win 60% of their game, 65%. They'll beat most teams. If it was all about fire wagon hockey from now until game 82, the Leafs would have 115 points. Once you get into the playoffs, it's a different story. So we all know that. We don't have to keep uh, repeating that. That's just a given. The question now is, how does Mike Babcock get this process, this game under control and, and start moving forward in a responsible manner, even if that means dialing back some of the offense? Guys like Matthews and Mar- uh, Tavares. I mean, Tavares, is a, he's like a two-way player anyway in a lot of ways. I mean, he's, he's really right. good. But are you, are you going to ask these guys now to start dialing back what brought them to the dance in order to compensate for glaring holes on a, def- on a, on a defensive unit that – you know, are just obvious. They need support. So what, what does he do now, Mike? I mean, what is the game plan for Mike Babcock? Because you're going to be robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're going to be taking away from one strong suit in order to, you know, f- fill a real, you know, difficult spot uh, well, you, for the you, team. You're, you're not going to ask them to dial it back because right now the other teams are playing that sort of wide open, undisciplined, as you called it, fire wagon hockey. As long as they're doing that, then, you know, you bring out your guns, they bring out their guns, and whoever wins the gunfight wins. And last night it was the Leafs, you know, getting the, the final laugh you know, less than 20 seconds or 30 seconds into, into overtime. But, you know, I'm just looking at the big picture. And as the year went, went along last year, they, they tightened up defensively because they had to because their opposition did. And it's going to be tougher to shut down the Leafs with Matthews and Tavares, you know, one, two combo. You know, Tavares scores a hat trick, Matthews scores two. And I, it, was, it was really funny. I, I listened to the broadcast on the NHL Network, and Jim Houston said something about um, the, the, the Leafs, uh, core players, you know, matching what the, you know, what the, what the Blackhawks were doing. Cause I think Taves had five goals, uh, you know, in like t- on 10 shots you know, in, in the first three games of the season. And I'm like, right now, if you look at who has scored, it's all the Leafs core players, it's Marner, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's Matthews, it's Tavares, Morgan Riley with two goals. The only guy who you can consider secondary offense is Casper Kapanen scoring that one goal. Other than that, it is the core guys. And I think yeah. you have to be a little bit concerned about the secondary guys not producing. And right now they're getting away with it because Tavares and Matthews are, are blowing up, but eventually you're going to need guys like Kadri and the Andreas Janssens of the world to yeah. start taking in goals. Mike Babcock's going to sort it all out. And um, he's not going to let, the tertiary players, the support players, get away with a free ride or a free lunch. Uh, he, made a, he made a comment. I mean, he didn't seem like he was particularly happy with Garrett Sparks' effort. I mean, Garrett Sparks, for as much as, you know, the millennial fan out there uh, looks at him as, again, he's, you know, a sympathetic figure. He's paid his dues. He deserves to be on the team. You're not this, you don't deserve anything, my young friends. You don't deserve anything. you got to earn it. And you have to earn the respect of the coach, whether he's gruff, and he seems oppressive. It doesn't matter. He is the coach, and he is the leader of this team. You have to serve him. If you don't like it, don't play team sports. You know what I'm saying? Well, so Garrett, well. Garrett Sparks is going to have to get his shit together. And um, the other thing too is, look, uh, you you can't you can't expect your all world talent, the guys who take this team to the next level, to regress and and put it in reverse to let everybody else catch up. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to stay the course. You've got to keep the pace that guys like Matthews and Tavares are setting, and you're going to be okay. But right now, there are, there are a lot of players on this team that are not working in sync, and it's only game three, Mike. Right. Hey, you want to win a championship? You're going to be under the microscope from, you know, minute one, you know? Well, I, I, you know, first with the, with the goaltending situation, uh, you know, it would be strange if Babcock had said something supportive about Garrett Sparks based on allowing six goals. Now, that being said, he wasn't responsible for every single one of them. The, the, the Taves tip in was, you know, I don't think anybody would have stopped that. And a couple of the other goals were really nice, but you know, the, the two goals with, with a late, late in the game where the game is on the line, you know, even if they're through screens, you've got to find a way to stop them. And, you know, the Brandon Manning goal, you know, again, that was that picked the corner. He was screened. But you know, I would say, you know, at least three of the six goals were stoppable and he, need, and he needs to stop that. And, you know, I know that the organization will be eagerly watching the waiver wire if Calvin Pickard or if 
uh, Curtis Macklin to get placed on waivers because they can put them with the Marlies. And I'm telling you right now, if Spark, you know, remember the window for Babcock's frustration with, with Jonas Enroth was four games. That mm-hmm. was it. You know, I don't know whether he wanted or was forced or decided that Sparks was the guy. But if Sparks doesn't play well in three or four games and they get back McElhaney or Pickard on waivers, you're going to see one of those guys called up. And I don't know if Sparks will be placed on waivers or if there will be an injury or if uh, they'll carry three Mm -hmm. goaltenders. But you know, with this team being a contender, Babcock is not going to stand for the backup goaltender costing them points, and he almost cost them points last night in his first game. Michael, you're the omniscient one. This is the Leafs convo, Norman James, with the one and only Michael P. Ajello. Garrett Sparks is a he's a company guy, right, Mike? I mean, he's he's a homegrown guy. He's a player that the Leafs have invested a lot of time in. And they've brought to the press of, you know, one level of hockey. He's the AHL goaltender of the year, backstop the team to a Calder Cup championship. Um, he's, he's graduated from that level. The problem now is, where is he graduating to? And uh, I, I, I can understand the Leafs' hesitation uh, of putting him on waivers, considering everything that they've invested in him, mm-hmm. compared to uh, Curtis McElhaney, who's tenured and, uh, you know, just kind of a journeyman goaltender. I can understand that. The Leafs do have a dilemma here. I mean, you've de- developed this guy to a point. What are you going to get out of him? The question now is, <clears throat> what is he going to give you? Don't, this isn't about, well, you know, Mike Babcock put him in a terrible situation. Or, my nice eyes to him. Or, um, you know, he's not getting the support he deserves. No, this is all about Garrett Sparks, man. Put on the damn pads, get in the net, and stop the puck. Now, wh- while we're expecting him to uh, raise his level the guys in front of him aren't playing too well either. So we may have to pause any um, fatal criticism Mm -hmm. of Garrett Sparks until this team can uh, batten down the hatches defensively. In the meantime, I mean, you're going to have a a bit of an uncertain goaltending situation, a volatile defensive situation, and um, some of the best offensive talent this this team, this league has ever seen. Uh, carrying the day. I look at every game that the Leafs have coming up as winnable. What, how are they going to get these wins? And, and we're at a point now where we want to see complete hockey. The thing is, is that, and you have, we, you know, as fans and media members and observers of the Leafs have to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, offense, even brilliant offense, it sort of cures all ills and it covers up other problems. But in the end, you know, when it gets down to the, you know, the end of the season and to the playoffs, you're not going to score seven goals. You're not going to be able to cover up defensive mistakes with your offense. And right now it's, uh, it's all, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, seven goals and the brilliance of Tavares and the brilliance of Matthews and Mitch Marner doing his thing and Morgan Riley scoring a couple goals. I mean, it's all great. It's all entertaining. And, and I'm sure fans are eating it up. But when you're, if you're looking at the team objectively and looking at what is necessary for them to win when it counts, there are signs, there are warning signs and concerns. You know, the Sparks thing, you got to give him a bigger sample size. I'm not sure if the coach will give him a bigger sample size, but that'll, that will play out. On defense, Jake Gardner last night, a, another couple bad giveaways. Every time Jake Gardner coughs up the puck, I think of you, Mike. Such a nice sentiment. Well, yeah, and I, I did. I didn't tweet it out, but I, I sent a, uh, I, I saw a v- video snippet of, that that sort of a hundred yard stare of Gardner after the I think it was the DeBrinket's goal. I mean, it was one of the goals in the in the uh, first period where he was on the ice, um, and there was you know, the camera pan to him, and it was just this you know like sort of deer in the headlights look. And uh, and I you know I'm not I'm not criticizing him for that because he's a, he's actually a, a good offensive player, but just that that look I flashed back to Game Seven against Boston. It's like I I don't know how somebody 
as brilliant offensively as he is can be so bad in his own zone. And it just, I, I don't think it's getting any better. So, um, you know, you basically, he's a double-edged sword. You're going to have to take what you get out of him and what you get from him offensively and defensively, but they also need other players to sort of step up their game to cover up for that. And I actually think Zaitsev hasn't played terribly so far, but Haynes, he doesn't look to, to be the same defenseman that he was last year. And, you know, Martin Marinson, uh, being inserted for Ozaganov, I think we're, what we're going to see is that rotation like we saw last year. I think Justin Hall will probably get in there at some point during yeah. his road trip, and Ozaganov will get in back in uh, against Dallas. So I think that was a, you know, thankfully it didn't kill them in terms of uh, a loss, mm-hmm. but, you know, Marinson is not a guy you can play all the time. Rest assured, Mike, this Gardner narrative that he's terrible, it's just a hoax set up by the Democrats. <laughs> Uh, let's not get let's not I know, I know. Please. I'll no. have to I'll have to do another video explaining why we should all hail um the president. Before we go, Mike, this defense it needs to be overhauled. Yeah, I mean, and you made the point about uh you know some players like Andreas Janssen. Um I mean th- this is a player who Babcock was trying to put the uh you know put light the fire under him during the exhibition season and continue to say that. And this year, I don't think has been close to the same player that played last year. So, you know, the Marlies have a number of forwards who could be recalled. And, you know, if, if Janssen continues to do that, then I think you're going to see that. But one last thing about, you know, the, the whole William Nylander thing, I think the one thing, you know, maybe when Tyler Ennis was playing on that top line, you know, um, the Nylander camp was feeling good about themselves in terms of, well, they miss us. You know, look, Tyler Ennis is uh, nowhere close to being William Nylander. Well, Ennis was moved to where we thought he was going to play, which is the third or fourth line. And when they put Kapanen up there, they scored two goals in a couple minutes. Kapanen stays on that number one line. That's not good, good news for the leverage that the Nylander camp has because I think Kapanen could score fairly regularly, and that will decrease the the leverage and the need for mm-hmm. William Nylander. Right. So maybe we see the, something shake loose in the next week or so. SDA, Brocco, uh I was about to call him Sammy Kapanen. Remember when Darcy Tucker laid him out and then two seconds later, yes. Ronick scored on Belfour? Go. Oh, yes. William Nylander, his services aren't essential to the Maple Leafs anymore. And that's the thing. They have offense in spades, Michael. They have a surplus in talent up front. You, they, they do. I mean, I'd love to see William Nylander on the team, but he'll add his 29 goals or whatever, and it'll, ju- it'll just be gravy. I mean, it's not like, well, you know, William Nylander is the Jonathan Taves of this era and you, you, he, or the Patrice Bergeron of this era. The longer these guys hold out, the less leverage I believe they have. The Leafs don't need William Nylander to, like, they're not hurting for offense. So play the game now and the game will pay you later. William Nylander is an asset that the Leafs have to take care of in the sense that he, you know, he may not be indispensable in terms of the offense that he provides, like you were saying, but they need to get him signed. They need to get him under control. And if Kyle Dubas deems a year or two down the road that he is expendable to get the defenseman that we know that they need, then they need to get him on, on a contract that other teams will be attracted to. I think in the end, that's what's going to end up happening. But right now in the immediate future, it's getting him signed, getting him signed to a, an amount that makes sense and playing out the year and maybe getting yourself a defenseman or two mm-hmm. before the deadline. But I think in the end, William Nylander is not part of this core in two or three years. Fix the F and defense, Mike. I got to get out of here. I've got turkey to eat. Thanks, Norman. That's a wrap for this edition of the Leafs Convo Podcast. Short and sweet from the intro and extra perspective. I've got Thanksgiving to attend. More turkey to eat. The trip to fan doesn't put me out. I wish it did. At Mike and Buffalo, at the Leafs Convo, at Norman James TLC. That's how you can get at us on social media. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please and thank you. Also, follow us and listen to us on iTunes. For Michael P., I'm NJ. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.